power spectral density of white noise. We look also at filtered white noise, low pass and pan pass filtered white noise. Okay, now we deal with a very important example of the power spectral density of white noise. So white noise, white noise in the frequency domain has a constant amplitude, as you can see here. So it's called white because you know that different frequent, different colors have different frequencies, and the and the white color is made of all different colors. So we call it white because it covers all different colors. If you mix all the colors, you get the white color. Now, <clears throat> this uh, this constant value is is called n naught over two, and we'll see why in a second. So this amplitude is n naught over two. If you do the inverse Fourier transform in the time domain, we'll get a delta. The inverse Fourier transform of a constant is delta. So white noise is an example where the, the, the samples are uncorrelated. So we get large value if you compare two, sam two samples spaced by zero, but then we get zero all the way. <coughs> Sorry, we get zero all the way. <coughs> now, you have to notice here that in real life, there is nothing like exactly white noise. Why? Because if you look at the power spectral density and you want to find the total power, it's the area under the curve. And because this line extends from minus infinity to plus infinity, you'll get infinite power. So we know that there is no, no real white noise in absolute sense. But relative to your bandwidth, okay, if you are operating the given bandwidth up to 1 giga or 2 giga or 1 mega or 2 mega, well, you don't care much about what happens that. For you as an observer, it's going to look like white noise. Now, thermal noise generated by electrons in electrical circuits and conductors has a power spectral density that is constant up to a very high frequency. And that's why we can approximate it with white noise, as we're going to see in the next next slide. But uh, before we go there, let's answer why do we call it n naught over 2? Why just not call it n naught? Remember that the unit for this, for the power spectral density, here, the, the unit for n naught is watts per hertz watts per hertz, which means, um, so the unit here is watts per hertz. Now, for a given bandwidth, remember that when in our spectrum, we sketch the negative part of the spectrum and the positive part. This is the negative part and the positive part. So if you want to find the power up to a certain spectrum or up to a certain frequency, we do it twice. So we'll get, for example, this is F and this is minus F or this is omega and this is minus omega. So we count the bandwidth twice and this is measured in watts per hertz. And to account for this fact, we divide n by two because it gives you how many watts per hertz and now we are doubling the amount of hertz or doubling the bandwidth. And this is why we divide by a factor of two, okay? All right, so we're now ready for, the, uh, for talking about circuits and, and resistance. White noise in circuits. Um, a resistor with temperature T, so it's function of temperature, T kelvins, produces noise across the open circuit terminals. So this is the resistance. And if you apply a voltage, you find that there is noise generated here. And this noise is going to have the following value, the following magnitude, where uh, T is a temperature in Kelvin, we just mentioned. Alpha is a constant. The green alpha shown here is a constant. We know its value in kilowatts per second. And in notes, as we mentioned, watts per hertz. So you'll find out that uh, if, for example, you substitute T uh, to 290, and as function of frequency, omega, you'll find out that it's going to have almost constant value. So if we sketch this expression, if we use MATLAB, enjoy some MATLAB and sketch this for some given values of F and omega, F, omega, T and alpha, we'll find out that relative to a note, if you make a note, for example, 
one then that's going to be 0 0.5 okay so up to up to a frequency of 10 raised to the power 12 we only go 0 0.9 of that value which is we get to 4 point or 0.45 of n naught that's 9 and not over 2 what we want to say is that the value of the of the spectrum is almost constant for huge bandwidth and this is why we we, we say we assume that the noise generated by a, a resistor is white noise a 1000 gigahertz for lots of applications that we have is considered high frequency now um, uh, in this slide we share now the bandwidth or the band limited low pass white noise the band limited low pass white noise okay so it is white noise because it has a constant value but it's band limited and it's limited by w now if the total power is p if the total power is p you know that the area under this curve should give you the power okay if you use omega it's going to be 1 over 2 by times the area you know the area of this rectangle is the width okay which is 2w right now by the height how much should be the height to make the answer equal to p so how much should be the height to make the answer equals to p then to cancel the p and w we get uh, p by up and W down so they cancelled each other and we have P and this is why uh, you can see that the magnitude here is P times by over W if you multiply them by each other you get 2 by times W the width is 2 W times the height which is P pi divided by W you get 2 pi times P the area is 2 pi times P because uh, the power when we find the power we find the area and we divide by 2 by you get p okay so we can say now that for a band limited low pass no white noise it is a spectrum what's w it is the limiting bandwidth or the or the cutoff frequency if you like and it's zero outside if you do inverse Fourier transform you will find that a rect in time give you sync okay so if you do the exact constants and follow the table or or, or integral you'll find that this is the autocorrelation or how the samples are correlated if a, if if the noise is uh, filtered using a low pass filter okay now the next example is band pass band limited white signal we had low pass now it's band pass you can see again we have two pans because we are working at high frequency now once more if you want the power to be p we have from here to here we have w this is bandwidth there is a negative uh, image of that so the center frequency is omega naught it goes w over 2 and w minus w over 2 on both sides okay so in general we have the width of the two rectangle is 2w the height has again to be by p over w as we explained this is how we express this is how we express uh, the band bus band limited noise it has a certain range okay and it's going to be the same for the negative and the positive side and this is why we use um, omega and absolute value and it should be zero outside zero here zero here zero here what is the inverse Fourier transform of rect shifted this shift is like multiplying by a cosine or sine so we can see that in time we get again um, the sync function but with a cosine multiplier okay this is a correlation you can see these dotted lines is just uh, to show you the envelope the true correlation is what you see inside here this is the correlation or the autocorrelation of the band pass limited white noise okay, here is your practice please uh, you can freeze this problem and try to answer in the notes or the, in the comment section uh, and the, this question says 
a wide sense stationary noise process n of t has an autocorrelation okay so the autocorrelation is given and the, the natural question would be to find and sketch the power spectral density so the question is to, use to find the Fourier transform. The integral Fourier transform is just as a reminder, it's shown here. And it's your job now to execute this integration and get the answer. Okay, uh, the answer and the final answer should be 6p over 9 plus omega squared. And using the Fourier transform definition or tables, you can do the same. So um, here is a sketch of the autocorrelation function R and N. Okay, it's, it decays with time. And the way it looks in the frequency domain is this. So check whether you have this right or wrong. The final, the final answer is here, and the two sketches are shown here. Here's a recall if you want to use the table, um, if you want to use the integral definition is here, or if you want to use the Fourier transform relation.